Hello, and welcome to the channel. I am Nox, and this is Dragon Age Origins. I am a huge fan of these games. I've already played this game and Dragon Age Inquisition all the way through, and I'm currently on my first playthrough of Dragon Age 2, and I, I thought that these would be a really good series to um, do a Let's Play of. So this is the first episode in what will hopefully be a long series covering all three of the main games and Dread Wolf whenever that one comes out, following the events of my canonical storyline in the Dragon Age universe. Um, quick apologies if the audio is off or anything, this is my first time recording so I don't entirely know what I'm doing, but um, without further ado, let's get started with the game. And so is the Golden City blackened, with each step you take my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Canticle of Thernides, 8.13 The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. They returned as monsters, the first of the Darks. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The Dwarven kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the Dark Spawn drove at us again and again until finally we neared annihilation. Women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings. The Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness and prevailed. It's been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. We are few now, and our warnings have been ignored for too long. Seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Man, love that cutscene. I've seen it like a godly number of times, but never gets old. Okay, character creation. So, this game has three races that you can play from. As you can choose from, um, humans, elves, dwarves, are all super interesting and they all dictate um, the beginning of the game. Well, humans are as interesting as humans are in um, any fantasy setting, but uh, we are going to be playing as a dwarf, a female dwarf too. 
Um, but the dwarves are a rigidly bound by caste and tradition, and dwarves have been waging a losing war for generations, trying to protect the last stronghold of their once vast underground empire from the Darkspawn. Dwarves are very tough and have a high resistance to all forms of magic, thus preventing them from becoming mages. Now, usually in games like this, I play as a magic class, because I enjoy magic, but for some reason in Dragon Age Origins, I've just never been able to play as a mage. I get far in the game, and I don't understand why. So instead, we're going to be playing as a warrior. Um, focusing on melee weapons, and just doing a bunch of damage. And we're going to take as our background, the dwarf noble background. So we will be the favorite child of the dwarven king. You proudly take up your first military command, only to learn that the deadly intrigues of family and psychopaths may pose a greater danger than, you, than even the battlefield. Alright. Now, luckily, if I remember correctly, my main canonical Grey Warden character was a. Just, just use this preset. I'm pretty sure. If I remember correctly, yeah, it was just this preset with a couple of changes. Um. No blush. Where's that like? Yeah, no blush. Uh, lipstick is a bit. Yeah, we got that orange color lipstick. Um, I'm just gonna leave the eyeshadow where it is. I know she had a tattoo. That was this golden, this golden color. I think it was that somewhere around there. Um, in her hair. Yep, that's her hairstyle. And then it's just a bit more red. <laughs> and then she's... Now, I can't remember what I actually... What her eye color actually is. I... Want to say it's like this greenish blue color. But I can't actually say for sure. So we're just going to say it's this greenish blue color. Um, her nose... I'm pretty sure it's this one. Once again, it's, it's kind of been a while, so I don't entirely remember. I'm not gonna mess around with mouth, jaws, cheek, neck, ears. It's just... This, this is good. Um, her portrait looks good as well. It's fine. Um, voice wise. Charmed. It didn't work. Well now, this does nothing. Sultry. That is our voice for Masenya Idukin. Alrighty. So we have six attributes, yeah. Six attributes that dictate just what the character can do, strengths, how Strong, you do damage, dex. I think it's like, yeah, character's chance to hit, willpower, not necessary for me. Well, willpower is like how much stamina I have, magic, not important for me. Um, cunning will be important because that dictates how persuasive I can be. And then constitution is just how. Um, this character, though, she just puts we're gonna put most of her points into strength, so we can deal a lot of damage, and two into cunning because you know she's a noble. So I want her to be effective at like intrigue and be persuasive when needed. Um, but yeah, besides that, um, we're going to get coercion. I think that way I can actually be persuasive in this game, or intimidating, depending on which one the job calls for. Um, Talent-wise, okay. So, tragically, since I start off as a Dwarf Noble, I get one point assigned to Weapon and Shield. Unfortunately, Masenya over here is not a Sword and Shield sort of a gal. She is two-handed warrior. So that is unfortunately just a 
wasted skill point, tragically. But um, we're going to get Pummel Strike and Mighty Blow, because I love these two skills so much. Um, and I, I think that's everything. Alrighty, let's start. And we're gonna do no, we're gonna do normal difficulty because I. I can't imagine playing this game on hard. I can't imagine doing certain quests on hard difficulty. Because certain quests on hard difficulty just sound terrible. Normal normal is hard enough as it is. Alrighty. Begin. Deep beneath the Frostback Mountains sits Ozimar, the larger of two known remaining dwarven cities in the world. Ozimar was once the seat of a major empire connected by tunnels called Deep Roads, which stretched thousands of miles. The city now stands alone, cut off from the rest of the dwarven ancestral lands by the Darkspawn incursion. Secure in Ozimar's impregnable construction, the dwarven noble houses continue their centuries-old power struggles. Assassination and blackmail are commonplace, but the appearance of honor is paramount. You are the second child of King Endron of House Idukan, the ninth Idukan ruler elected by the Noble Assembly. You grew up in a world rife with political intrigue and have struggled against brothers and cousins for honor and prestige. Today, a feast celebrates your first military commission the opening move towards real power in the ever-changing game of Dwarven politics. Greetings, my lady. You are dressed and ready. Excellent. I couldn't find the armor's matching dagger, but I scrounged up a rather fancy longsword. Do you wish to wear your shield to the Noble's Feast? Alright, I just... I love um, the whole Dwarven politics and stuff. Um, so, mm, no. Nah, leave it. I don't want to appear fearful. You couldn't look anything less than beautiful. The armor only accentuates it. Although, the idea of you charging naked into battle holds a certain appeal. You know, I totally forgot that you could have the option to have, like, four um, The female dwarf have, like, a relationship. I totally forgot about that. Uh, they do not, though. Just friends. One can't take all this marching about and speech-making too seriously. Moving on to the business at hand. The king expects you to make an appearance at the feast, but there's no rush. The noble family heads will spend hours boring your father with petitions and petty grievances. Well... Where, where are my brothers? Yeah. Out and about. I saw them on my way here, browsing the shops. As part of the celebrations, permits have been auctioned off to members of the merchant caste who wish to sell wares in the Diamond Quarter. Lord Harrowmont has also opened up the provings for young warriors to test their mettle before tomorrow's battle. Rumor has it that Harrowmont hopes you'll be swept off your feet if a well-placed young nobleman wins the provings in your honor. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Not what I'm saying, yeah. Um, perhaps I'll go win the proving myself. Win the proving in your own honor? That would be most interesting. Shall we then? Yes, let us head over to With the you as always, my lady. The day is ours until the feast. All the codexes. Cool, let's just see a game real quick. a lot more starter equipment than I remember having. Hey, I will take it. That's better. That's gonna be super useful. That is useless.
The crystal contains an image of the city of Orzammar. Interesting. Okay, that's just me. Five copper. That's, that's nothing. So I, I'm a big fan of the lore and backstory of these games, so I do intend to read all the codexes when we find them, but um, I'll make sure to try and add like chapters so that that way if you're not interested you can just skip the codexes and just watch the game. But um, the city of Orzammar. The dwarves are, laud are lauded for their craftsmanship, and the city of Orzmar is one of their finest works. Orzmar lies at the heart of the Frostback Mountains, deep underground. The city arcs outward from the royal palace, which is built around a natural lava bed, continually fountaining liquid rock, which both lights and heats the entire cavern. The topmost tier of Orzmar is home to the noble caste, with their palaces fanning out in both directions from the court of the king as well as the Shaperite, which serves as a repository for all dwarven knowledge. The lower tier is the Commons, where the merchant caste holds sway and where the finest works of Orzmar's craftsmen are for sale. In the center of the River of Lava, connected to the Commons by a causeway, are the Proving Grounds, a sacred arena where the dwarves, by ancient tradition, settle their disputes. On one side of the fiery river are the ruins of old dwarven palaces, fallen into dis disrepair which the locals call Dust Town, now home to the city's castles. On the other side of the river are the Deep Robes, which once joined the sprawling Dwarven em with, oh, which once joined the sprawling Dwarven Empire together, but now, after centuries of darkspawn incursions, are, left, are largely sealed off. Nearly all knowledge of this network of underground passages has been lost, even to its builders. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, the Travels of Chantry Scholar, her brother Janity B. Orzammar politics. As dangerous as it is to mistake a dwarf's caste, it is far more deadly to mistake his alliances among the noble houses of Orzammar. Everyone in the city is allied with someone, whether by blood or by word. The nobles do not engage directly in commerce themselves, as that is not the domain of the, as that is the domain of the merchant caste. But they do serve as patrons. They invest in shops or in artisans' work, and in turn reap a share of the profits as well as a measure of the credit. Merchants and warriors alike benefit from the service of a prestigious patron. The relative power of each house is ever-changing. It is usually safe to assume that whichever noble house holds the throne is at the top of the heap. Below that, things grow into a tangled mess. Houses ally with one another by marriage. They earn rank and prestige when combatants loyal to them, or from their bloodlines when provings. They earn it when artisans they patronize. Patronize? Patronize? Eh, one of those. Become sought after or well-regarded or when the merchants they invest in become successful. The degrees of power that these achievements confer is so murky, even to the dwarves, that it isn't unusual for nobles to challenge each another to provings over whose smith forges better belt buckles or whose servants have the best manners. Nor is it out of the ordinary to find two merchants arguing over whose noble patron has won the most acclaim, for the rank of the patron is the rank of the client. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the assembly, where the Deshires, representatives of each noble house, meet. Although the king technically rules Orzmar, kings are elected by the assembly, so each king must work constantly to maintain the support of the Deshires. Kings who prove unpopular find their heirs deemed unacceptable inherit the throne. Power then passes to another house. I absolutely love dwarven politics. They are so, like, messed up. I love them. Dwarven Faith We are the children of the stone. She supports us, shelters us, offers us the most priceless gifts of the earth. The worthy return to their the worthy return to embrace in death, becoming ancestors. The unworthy are cast out, unable to rest, that their failings may not weaken the stone. So it has been since the earliest memories. We live by the stone, guided by the ancestors, who speak with the voice of the provings and whose memories the Shaperate keeps forever in Lyrium. We do not accept the empty promises of heaven as the wild elves do, or vie for the favor of absent gods. Instead, we follow in the footsteps of our paragons, the greatest of our ancestors. Warriors, craftsmen, leaders, the greatest examples of lives spent in service to our 
fellow dwarves. Our paragons joined with the light joined with the stone in life, and now stand watch at our gate, ushering in those surfacers privileged to visit our city. We know there is no greater honor to hope for, no better reward for an exceptional life, as told by Shaper Sizabar. And I think I had, yeah, characters. King Endrin Idukin. Denial of the traditions of our people does not qualify as a political technicality. Endrin of House Idukin traces his ancestry back to the paragon Idukin, the greatest warrior of Orzammar's history, who beat back the Darkspawn hordes in the First Blight. The second son of King Ansgar Idukin, he became, the, he became heir after his elder brother died in approving. The most respected king in four generations, he restored contact with Kal Sharak, the only other remaining city of the once vast Dwarven Empire, which had been lost during the First Blight. Of oh, course, cool. so that's my dad, wasn't it? And then that's all just. I know that stuff. Alrighty. Anything in here? Ah, okay. As you desire. I do know there is a. Well, yeah. I knew that was here. Resign a bit. I am proud to serve the Idukins. As you should be. Locked. Trian's room. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't run away. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were Prince Balin coming down the hall. I... forgive me. Um... What are you doing in my brother's quarters? She's, uh... It seems she's one of your brother Balin's newest, um... Companions. Prince Balin is attending the feast being held in Lady Idukin's honor. Yes, of... of course. <laughs> it was presumptuous of me to think that he would return to... I am sorry. I will show myself out. With your leave, my lady. Okay, I love these ones. Or I could just refer to Gorum. But I'm not. Um. Yes, you may go. Thank you. I will go now. Well, let's just go to my brother's room. One more. What is it? Oh, that would be useful. And so I shall. What is that? Um, check that out. A letter from Rika. My dearest Prince Balin. You are too kind to me. I am a small and insignificant thing, and I do not deserve your attention. But your willingness to tolerate my presence shows you to be a prince among men. I cannot thank you enough for the beautiful necklace you presented to me. I will cherish it always, and I promise I will wear it at our next meeting. I know my gratitude means nothing to you, but I must say again, thank you. I will always be your humble and devoted servant. Yours truly, R. Okay, so... If it's just signed R, how do we know her full name is Rika? Do we know who Rika is? I don't know, they're just... Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then I think we got two things, yeah. House I do can shield of Orzammar. The Assembly has never named a Paragon with so little disagreement as there was for Paragon I Dukin. No naysayers, only a single absentation. His worthiness was unquestionable, his favor with the ancestors clear. But family rumor says that the man himself was deeply troubled, prone to fits of melancholy and self-doubt, never satisfied with his great achievement in protecting Orzmar, he died cursing that he had not managed to save the outlying tides. Before he rose to Paragon, he was of little note. The memories tell us that he never entered a single proving, never sought to elevate his place amongst the warrior kings. He spent most of his years prior to the first blight fighting skirmishes in the deep rows, keeping them free from surface bandits, content to live quietly with his wife and daughters. When the blight began, it caught Orzammar in the midst of a vicious inter-house war. 
most of the warrior caste was caught up in the feuding. For as word of attacks poured in, each great house demanded that the army be sent to defend their tithe, and no house would agree to sacrifice their own holdings for the safety of any other. Of any others. The assembly was so utterly tied up with the infighting that the Darkspawn spread unchecked to the gates of Orzmar herself. In the chaos, I do congrudgingly took command of the armies. He enlisted the aid of the mining caste to collapse overrun passages, called upon the smith caste to supply them with arms, and bypass the assembly and the nobles entirely. With his leadership, Orzammar was saved from annihilation. For his insubordination, he was made paragon. Yet he always considered it a defeat. From his history by Duke and Paragon King Peacemaker by Scholar Verta. Okay. Orzammar History, Chapter 1. The memories tell us that our kingdom once reached far beneath the mountains, and that the tides were almost beyond counting. Kaushirok was the capital then, home to all the noble houses, and Orzmar was simply the home of the minor and smith castes. It was with the Deventer Imperium that things changed. Paragon Garal moved the seat of power to Orzmar to more closely oversee the trade that began to the surface. It seemed that our people were entering a new age of prosperity. The memories hold no explanations for the coming of the Darkspawn. Only questions. At first, they were rumors, noises in the deep road, a lost traveler here and there. The warrior cast sent men to patrol the road and thought the matter settled. We did not know that while we searched for them, they were engaged in a search of their own. Sleeping deep in the stone itself was an arch deep. They found him and awakened him, and the blight began. The darkspawn poured out of the deep roads like smoke, then, and the warrior cast struggled to hold them back. Countless tigers were lost in that first blight, but as ever, in the worst moments of our need, a paragon arose. Paragon Dukin led the defenses of Orzammar, and the Dark Horde was beaten back. The cost of victory, however, was great. Much of the deep roads were sealed to hold back the Darkspawn, cutting off tides and even whole cities forever. Orzammar is a kingdom, as told by the Shapers of Zavar. Okay, so... We date all the way back to the first flight. Cool, cool. Good to know. Ancestors watch over you, my lady. Good day. Congratulations yeah, on being named commander, my lady. Thanks. Well, all right. Locked. That's father's room. Yeah. I am at your service. Um. Oh. Oh, Are, are you guys? Yeah, that's the same exact character model. Okay. How did I see that one before? You sure you want to go to the feast now? I doubt we can escape to see the provings once we're inside. No, I was just turning to look at the door. I can't wait to see who's fighting today. Locked. That's an interesting one. I went to watch the provings. Most exciting. Yeah, that's where we're going. I know you will do House I Duke and proud. That I will. Tomorrow will bring much glory. Don't know what's happening tomorrow. I'm at your service. Cool. Your father has allowed the merchants to show their wares in the Diamond Quarter during these celebrations. Right. I'm sure we can work this out reasonably. It's in the records. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, I'm a quick save before I talk to you, too. Please, Master Volney. My work is accredited by the Shaper. These books are lies written by the enemies of House Volney. I write only what I find in the ancient records. Lady Iduken, you can vouch for my work, can't you? Your father loved my history of Iduken, Paragon King, Peacemaker. Hey, we just read that. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, ah, I greatly enjoyed that book as well. This worm has written a book that slanders my house. What does it say? Uh, no, actually, this is a serious charge. He deserves to die for what he has written of Paragon Volley. Well, that's, that's not... Oh, true, I didn't ask. 
Um, that's intense. What exactly has he written, Brockton? He says that Volgi, the paragon who founded my house, known throughout the world as the greatest of men, was a fraud. Not precisely. When the assembly names a paragon, that man or woman is then, by definition, everything one can aspire to be in the world. They form their own noble houses and are revered as living ancestors. But paragons start off as men. Volney was more than a man. Okay, but what did he actually do? Get to the point. Why is Bronton so angry? Volney became a paragon by the narrowest margin in history. One vote. A vote mired in rumors of intimidation, intrigue, and outright bribery. The records of that vote are kept in the shaper and are a matter of fact. Not liking history doesn't make it any less true. Okay, so... When it comes to Messenia, for the most part, she's about the truth. And, like, the truth should be no. Except when it comes to House Iduken. Like, <laughs> when it comes to House Iduken, she's in there for the family. But, like, if it's not a House Iduken, and if it does benefit her... She's all about the truth being known. So, the scholar is right. You're taking his side? What if he published a book like this about your paragon Iduken? As I just mentioned, never happened. Iduken was a great man. Doesn't happen. And Volney was not? Must you disparage a paragon? You've made a huge mistake. That fool has no idea how weak his house is or how low he sits in it. Shall I have him killed, my lady? Interesting. Um... What do you think, Scholar? Well, historically, it has been prudent to eliminate a small threat before it becomes larger. Hey, that, Gorham. Do the prudent thing. How do you want it done? Huh. Let's go quietly. An accident. Preferably. Understood. You've shown yourself more daring and aggressive today than most believed of you. Someday I hope to write of the great exploits you are sure to perform. Word has been sent. He won't live past the hour. You've shown House Iduken a friend to research, history, and the glory of our people. You remember this when you write of me. Of course. Heroism and pity for the small man have always been hallmarks of House Iduken. Now, I must try to make sense of these notes. Good day, Your Highness, and thank you. Yeah, and the, the reason why I did that quietly is because I feel like if I'd done it, if I'd given a reason for why I killed him, some people might speculate that, you know, the Idukens are hiding something about their paragon. And then it was done, it was a way to like sort of protect the paragons. It wasn't. We we're just removing him. That's the reason why it doesn't need to be known why he's killed. Small balls of ah, my friends. Enjoying the festivities so far. Quite. But my lord, Quite. these are surfaces. Have you Died heard about tomorrow's assault on the Darkspawn Burners? Who has it? They say they are going to strike a blow with the Horde, but rumor has it they are actually searching for Bronca. The Paragon? Why search? The ancestors have risen her up to join them. You don't think she's still out there? Impossible. My lord. Okay, that was like really rude being two, <laughs> two different um, ambient dialogue. I don't know what you call that. Okay, well, they were talking about Bronca being missing. That's what we're doing. In our quest, we're trying to find someone called Bronca. He was talking about selling bad silk, I think? I don't actually know. My Lady Idukin, you honor me by visiting my humble booth. May I show you my wares? <laughs> I love this. Uh, Gorm, why is this man speaking to me? Because he has forgotten his place. A thousand pardons, please. Forgive me, your highness. This looks to be mostly fabrics from the human lands. These merchants form alliances with those who have abandoned our ways to live on the surface. 
How many of our people are on the surface? According to the scholars, more than 500. Does it matter? The surfacers are lost to us. Perhaps we should get going. Just a simple version. Nothing beats a good set of steel cutlery. I trust follow, big sister. How surprising to run into you out among the common folk. Especially since duty requires that you attend our King Father at the feast today. Have you so little respect for him to disregard his wishes on a day set aside for you? Lord Harrowmont told me we wouldn't be needed for hours at least. Silence! If I want the opinion of my sibling second, I will ask for it. Yes, Your Highness. Forgot about Chan. <laughs> for Gorom. Um, I, I want to stand out for Gorom, but like... That's not going to do us anyhow. I don't think that will help Gorom, because he is, you know, lower in cast, and the dwarves are very all about fast and stuff. Uh, but no, we're definitely not going to do what Chan wants, so I go where I want when I want Chan. Your lack of a sense of duty to your house is obvious. I can't imagine why you're receiving a commission. I expect after tomorrow I'll spend much time apologizing to the heads of the noble houses for the deaths of their children under your incompetent command. That's a bit harsh, isn't it, Trian? As heir to the throne, it is my duty to impart wisdom and judgment upon those who need it. Now then, you, get to the feast. Kiss my ass, Trian. I'd advise you to watch that tongue, dear sibling. Father will not live forever. Come, Balin. That was fun. Nothing like being talked down to by the next king. Okay, so like... Masenya probably does sort of have like a competition to the throne. Like she does aspire to take the throne. But she's not going to say this in public. So, um... Ignore him. It's my day, not his. That it is. Let's get back to enjoying it, shall we? My lady Iduken, nothing here rivals your amazing Iduken armor, but if you wish something made... You know very well how Iduken has its own royal armorers. Of course. Forgive me. Um, tell me about your pieces, though. Your Highness's legendary prowess is matched only by your kindness. Okay. Uh, tell me about the armor you make. I buy only the finest iron ore, and personally oversee the armor's crafting by the most skillful of the smith cast. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not rude. I'm not rude. Fascinating. Thank you. Of course. The honor was all mine. Look at this piece, darling. It rivals even the work of the Paragon Smith herself. Nonsense, woman. Your words bring shame upon our house. See how the edges are rough and pitted? Would you compare this to Bronca's work? Trust a woman to speak of things she doesn't understand. Be quiet now and pray the ancestors deliver Bronca back safely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I forgot about the late, late and sex is open. Dwarves. So I do want to see if I can sell my junk armor to you. My lady. Show me your wares. You honor me. Okay, so I got my, yeah, so I can just sell this, this, this. Those two are DLC items that will be useful later. What about that one? I doubt he's up to the task. I'm not going down that one again. Oh, I would love to end up with a red head. I wasn't oh, talking about Boron. Blackstone, my noble. Mm -hmm. Stand up straight. They're coming. Greetings, my lady. May I say you look striking today. Is this your paramour? He wears both his band braces, unmarried and eligible. I'm flattered, ladies, but I'm not a noble. I'm a knight of the warrior caste. Warrior caste isn't bad. Tally, we didn't pay gold for these permits to take warrior caste. I guess you're right. Sorry, sir. Okay. So, Messenia would definitely know who these two are. Or she'd suspect, um... What's going on here? They're noble hunters, my lady. 
Because a man takes his caste from his father, they hope to bear a noble lord's son. If a noble hunter succeeds, she is raised up to join the house as a concubine to care for her son. It brings new swords to a house, so many nobles look favorably on such women. Okay, I absolutely love the concept of noble hunters, so I don't know if they explained it prior, but like, if you're new to Dragon Age, dwarves, their caste system is entirely based on the gender of the parent like that you share a gender with so as he just mentioned sons to a noble would become a noble but if one of these noble hunters had a daughter they would stay in whatever caste these two women are and i think i don't know they're not wearing anything like significant they could be castless i don't think they are i don't know they could be though um Object nobles only. Yeah, that is true, but. How many Dukins are there? There's like only. That I'm aware of, there's only her and her two brothers, Balin and Trian. And you know, if one of these did become. If one of these did bear an Idukin child, she would then have them sort of loyal to her, because she was the one that recommended them, so. We could certainly use more Idukin swords. And then perhaps you'd tell your brothers to come say hello? Ellie, yeah, mind your manners. No, it's all right. I'll mention you. My lady is kind and generous beyond her duty. Once again, fascinating. Short bow, so bad. Small brown metal shield, so bad. I've got for this. Okay, so like, I've been like playing like late game Dragon Age Origins recently, so it's all like big money. So seeing just copper pieces is just, just sad. Invest in the next great trade expedition! Greetings, my lady Idukin. I am so honored to have you visit my booth. I have a proposition, but I dared not approach. Yet you dare now. True. He has a point. Um, for, um, try to be more friendly. Very well, then. Speak. Um, yes. Just so. Here is the thing. What I mean to say is... It's all right. Sorry. So nervous. I had a dagger made for you as a gift for your first command. I uh, sent a messenger to deliver the dagger to you. Prince Trian had him thrown out. I don't know what offense he caused, but I had him beaten severely. Yeah, Trian doesn't need reasons. Oh, yeah. His reasons is that it was sent for me. Um. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh. Let me see this dagger. Here, here it is, Your Highness. That's an amazing piece, Merchant. You do me much honor, sir. The blade has been crafted over a period of two years by masters of every art. I wish to bless the lady's first command and hope that someday, when she rules, she will wear it. Trian is heir. He will rule when King Endrin returns to the stone. If the assembly wills it. Forgive me, sir, but whispers say the second child of Endrin will be chosen. Whispers indeed. It's a princely gift. If Trian recognizes it, though, it may send the wrong message. Or the right one. Depending on your view. Well, like I just mentioned, Masenia totally does want to become Queen of Orsmar. So, and she wants to send the. What, what's the word that I'm thinking of? The message. So, yeah, go take the dagger. She, she's not going to say that, though. She's not going to insult Trian right in front of a merchant cast. She got some class, but I'll take the dagger. Thank you. You bring uncountable honor to me. What he means is that you'll bring uncountable gold to him if you wear that piece in public. I'm fine with that. Though, can I sell you my... No stuff. Cool. It's absolutely useless to my senior. No, can I sell you my bow and shield? My lady. My lady, 
تو آن میراحت است What is that magic merchant doing in Tarzamar? Oh, Lady Iduken, here, in my booth. I am so... Oh. <laughs> Fainted. You make quite the impression these days. Is it hard to be the king's child, never able to just blend in? Um, I don't... Nah, she... I don't think she has a problem with it. I think she likes it. But, um, I'm like, ah, no, I am what the ancestors made me. As are we all. Shall we move along? Like, I wanted to know. Wait, what? Let's see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I actually did that. Like, I wanted to know what this magic merchant was doing in a place where, you know, because dwarves can't use magic. Can I still interact with them? He appears to be unconscious. Oh, he's bad, so. Okay, interesting. My lady, are you heading to the Proving Arena? Yes. I intend to watch the Provings. Or, I could just refer to Gorham. Huh. Yes, I intend to watch the Provings. We have been charged with the task of escorting you to the Proving Grounds. I clean forgot about that. Forgive me, I should have informed you sooner. The King decided you were not to travel through the Commons unguarded. Why? I did mention the merchants that won permits to show their goods in the Diamond Quarter. There were only so many permits auctioned off, and quite a few were turned away. Your father fears you will be harassed on the way to the Proving. Ah. Uh, you know, that makes sense. Excellent. I grow weary of these merchants. Will we be leaving then? Yes. We are at your command. Thank you. Proving. Valos Atrenda, in the 23rd year of the reign of King Ragnan Iduka, an old man of the servant caste was accused of stealing a sapphire ring from his employer, Lord Dace. The servant was stripped of his position, he and his family thrown to the streets and soon after the servant died. The son of the disgraced servant challenged Lord Dace to approve it, declaring that his father had been the victim of a cruel injustice and the ancestors would bear him witness. Lord Dace had no choice but to accept. On the sacred stone of the Proving Ground, the noble man faced the servant boy. Lord Dace carried a sword crafted by his own hand and was clad in his great-grandfather's armor. The servant boy had neither armor nor weapon. When the battle began, the boy fought like a whole pack of angry deep stalkers, flinging himself upon the startled lord, wrenching the sword from his hand, and crying at his armor with bare fingers, oh my gosh. The boy locked, the boy knocked. Lord Dace to the ground and beat him until the Lord begged for mercy. The boy and his family were reinstated to their place in the Dace household, and the virtue of the boy's father was not questioned again. The ancestors had spoken, and no question, and no one would. Well, let's repeat that one. The ancestors had spoken, and no one would question their word, as told by Shaper Vortax. So that's two Shapers now. Oh, and we had life in, or oh, in Orzammar. I totally forgot about that one. The dwarves of Orzmar are quite unlike those found in most human cities. Although Orzmar derives its vast wealth from trade with human kingdoms, all dwarves who come to the surface to trade are stripped of their position in society. Dwarven merchants are so ubiquitous in human cities that many people labor under the impression that all dwarves are merchants, or that their whole race worships the point of trade. But these surface dwarves are atypical creatures, the ones willing to give up all ties to their kin and sacrifice their rank in order to conduct business. 
Below ground, the dwarves are a people obsessed with honor, their own and that of their family. Most nobles incorporate chain mail even into formal gowns, because slights and insults often turn deadly. They are a people who revere excellence and strive to achieve it in all things. Even members of the servant caste have been elevated to paragons, usually posthumously, in recognition of remarkable servants. Interesting. No, I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen, like, pictures of, you know, chainmail, dwarven gowns, so that's interesting. Where are you? Let's see what the Proving Master has to say. Your Highness, it is an honor to have you here. Have you come to watch these brave warriors do battle in your honor? Well, actually, I have come here to fight. Your Highness, this proving is in your honor. Then honor her by doing as she says. Lady Idukin will fight in this proving. I will honor today's warriors by testing their skills. Of course, it is well within your rights. Men and women of Orzammar, we have a late entry to these provings. Held on the eve of battle for the honor of House Idukin. I give you the Lady Idukan herself! Are you ready for your first match? Ready, eager, hungry. And let us begin! This is a glory proving, fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar for the honor of House Idukan. Lady Idukan will fight Alair Bimo, youngest son of Lord Bimo. You honor me with this match. The honor is mine. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Okay, combat. So we're gonna start off with the pommel strength because. just sort of becomes the thing with this spider character. Since I put all my points into strength, it's gonna be a lot of misses sometimes. That was quite a fight. Alair Bimo is no slouch with that hammer. Are you ready for your next opponent? Um, who is my next opponent? Adal Helmi, another female warrior and a tenacious fighter. Oh, interesting. Good, it will be an interesting fight. Excellent. Let us go. This is a glory proving, fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar, for the honor of House Idukan. Lady Idukan will fight Adal Helmi, eldest daughter of Lady Helmi. You are my inspiration, Your Highness, and to all of us who follow your example and live by the sword. Hey, ain't that the chick that was fighting in the little cutscene? Uh, thank you. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Okay, let's go into my well. She's a doable name. She's a fighter to use precision. Precision strike? That's a fighter ability. A rogue. Oh, that was way better than the second. Where's that skill earlier? The winner is Lady 
Duke. I don't think I'm killing these people. No, no, no I'm not killing them. Hopefully. <laughs> I don't... I'm just injuring them. That was a crowd pleaser. I can't remember the last time we had two female warriors of such skill. Sir Blackstone is your next opponent. Are you ready to face him? Oh, hey, Telly and, um... Maddie? Marty? The, the noble hunters were talking about Sir Blackstone. What can you tell me about him? One of the best of the warrior cast. He achieved glory in close combat assaults in the Deep Roads. Well, I am ready to fight. And let us begin! This is a glory proving. Fought under the watchful eyes of the paragons of Orzammar. For the honor of House Iduken. Lady Iduken will fight Sir Blackstone, Deep Road Squad Leader of the Warrior Cast. This is your education, child. Try to learn as you bleed. Now, okay, the other two ones were all like honor and stuff. This dude wasn't. So, um. <laughs> she She's honorable, but like, for him, I don't know. He called me a child. I'm like, I guess I am younger, but, uh, nah. I'll make you eat those words. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! It's like missing your respect, people, but, you know. Insult her and call her a child, she's gonna insult you. You know, I'm still probably striking the else under arms. Let's get verified. The winner first one. is Lady Iduken. It's all right, put yourself in the I don't think we're in danger up here. Well done. You have proven that even the best of the warrior cast cannot match a noble Iduken. Brandland Ivo is your final opponent. He too has had many victories today. Are you ready to face him, or will you rest first? Um, what can you tell me about Brandland Ivo? He is a decorated fighter who prefers unusual weapons, and rarely fights with the same techniques twice. How Saivo is relatively inconsequential, but Franlin may change that. He's expected to take a full command of his own soon. Oh, interesting. I, I thought Ivo was a royal... noble name. Royal? Is it... royal cast? I, I can't actually remember. Um... Lesser <laughs> House, Lesser <Lester> Romare. <laughs> Uh, well, let me fight this friend that I Very have. good. This is a glory proving. Fought under the watchful eyes of the paragons of Orzammar. For the honor of House Iduken. It is down to just two warriors. With backbones of stone and wheels of iron. They have defeated all others this day. Lady Iduken will fight Randman Ivo, second son of Lord Ivo. You fight well. I wish you glory today and glory tomorrow. Hey, he's a second child like I am. Um. May you be a step. First warrior to fall is vanquished. The victor is champion. Fight! Oh, damn. Uh, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not a fan of shield. How dare you? Who knows? Yeah, how dare you do your attacks? Duken. 
Oh, it's just some nice things. I love little like glitches like that. Okay, go on. Put your weapons away. Go on. There you go. Congratulations! Friend and Ivo is as fierce a competitor as I've ever seen. You vanquished every warrior of note in today's proving. The ceremonial helm, commissioned by your father for today's winner, is yours. Hmm. Well, like, I am... commanding? Isn't that what they're saying? Something about, like, me being a commander, going on an expedition or something? Tomorrow, so like, I bet the helmet is useful, like, would give me a good bonus. But they're gonna give me armor, right? Like, they're sending me out there, they're definitely gonna give me a good helmet, right? So, send it to Franlin. Oh, I don't know. Do I want the helmet? Or do I want to give it away? Um... Yeah, send it to Franlin. He fought bravely. The people will remember your honor and generosity for all time. Hey, and it makes me honorable. We're all about honor. Right. You know what? I wonder if Gorham has anything to say. Good showing there, my lady. Your opponents will be licking their wounds all eve. My lady? I don't you take a break. No. I am ready to Your leave. wish is our command. Okay. He didn't have something to say. Does he have something to say out here, though? My lady. He does. Like, I assume Masenya knows about Orm's family. But, um... I don't, so tell me about your family, Coral. Not much that you don't already know. My father's father was a great hero of the Deep Roads excursions and raised the family to the top of the warrior caste. He was even nominated to join the assembly and found a noble house. But the honor was in the nomination. He wasn't afforded a single vote. My father served your father for many years, and now I serve you. Interesting, interesting. Wait. Does Gorm have, like, other siblings? Or... Is... Or should I just get Gorm's, like... Gorm's father's only kid was given to... Endrin? My father's, like, only, like... One minute. Let me get my thoughts. So, Endrin had Gorm's father as... Oh no, wait, no, no. He didn't say second, but let's, let's like, assume Worm's father was, like, a... He got... Almost... He was... His name was put up to be a noble house. Because that means he was, like, a prestigious person. He was, he was a good warrior. Because he was at the top of the warrior cast. Let's say that... If Gorm's the only known person of this family that I know of, Gorm Sarlacc, if he's the only one that I know of, and then Indran assigned Gorm Sarlacc to me... As my second, and not to Trion. Is that part of the other reason why like, Trion hates me? Because Gorm was assigned to me. Like, is it like an insult of some sort? Or I'm just looking way too deep into this. <laughs> I'm probably, probably just looking way too deep into this. But anyways, are you excited about the battle tomorrow? Yes, I yearn to face the dark spawn and prove my worth as your second. I'm not going to say these. We'll be spectacular or you do fine. Oh no, you do fine kind of sounds. Condescent, like, you, you'll do fine. But we'll be spectacular just sounds like, you know. I don't know. Eh, let's go with you do fine. May the stones support us and the ancestors look down with pride. As you will. I was probably looking way too much into that, into that answer. You know. We're in Dragon Age games, if not to look way too in-depth to a single choice. 
or just Bioware games as a whole. You have a fancy shield. Congratulations on being named commander, my lady. Do you have any extra dialogue? My thanks. No. House I do is blessed to have you. Now, I wonder if I should check the rest of the house just in case I can do the doors are locked. Uh no. no let's just let's just go ahead with the quest. It's probably As you desire. Okay, I know you have Look, to the Grey Wardens are here. The raid tomorrow must be more than a standard mission. The wardens only go where the dark spawn are the greatest threat. My lady, I do. Might I bother? And that's why I s stood over on the stairs, because I knew he had something to say. I knew Gorham did. I didn't want to say the same. I didn't want to say their two things at the same time like we did earlier. They did that one situation earlier in Orzammar. Many thanks for your willingness to hear me out, my lady. I wish to speak to you of a matter most urgent. Uh, like I don't, I don't feel like I'm being rushed. I don't need to ask for him. Yeah, of course we're days. Uh, there is a vote coming before the assembly next week, and a word from you could go a long way towards helping our cause. What cause? The vote concerns the status of the so-called surface caste, lost to the stone air-touched, and so forth. Centuries ago, narrow-minded men declared that any dwarf who left to live on the surface forfeited his caste and his house if noble. That he was, in essence, no longer a dwarf. I seek only to remedy an injustice, to retie the bonds of anyone who can trace himself to one of the noble houses wherever he may live. Please, agree to speak for this noble cause. Okay, interesting. So, I remember this was like, sort of, you know, a tough decision, but I'm pretty sure when it came to Masenya, her view on the surf, her view on the surface dwarves is that they are, they're still dwarves, like, she, she doesn't exactly have a problem with them. And she doesn't exactly have a problem with their, you know, live on the surface, which isn't, you know, a very traditional idea when it comes to dwarves and stuff. She's she's a bit different in that sense, but um, yeah. So, but she's not she's not just gonna help him for nothing, cause she's political. Like she she. I doubt she's ever expressed his opinions because she does want to become like, you know, queen. And the assembly wouldn't look kindly upon that. So, what do I get in return? Now, why so interested in this particular cause? Those on the surface are our lifeline. They facilitate trade with the surface. They're honorable and, um, uh, oh, let's be honest. I don't care a whit for those who have wandered from the stone. My wife, however, is a gem of a different color. She has a cousin, a useless sort, but she's quite fond of him. He joined a speculative venture to the surface, hoping to make his fortune, and went bust. Now he wishes to come home, but he cannot, for he has no house and would be castless. For my wife's sake, I take up his cause. Will you lend me your voice? What do I get in return? <laughs> I love... I love that he's just forthright with the reason. I keep my ears to the stone, my lady. I hear many things, some of which could be a great help during your mission tomorrow. A little forewarning to help your forearming, if you know what I mean. I have a deal. What do I do? Once again, she... She gets something out of this, and she always sort of agrees with that. When your father presents you to the noble houses, I will ask for your opinion on the matter. 
you have merely to say that you feel our surface brothers should be returned their noble rights. What could be more simple? Oh, casts. Sweet. The casts. Visitors to Orzammar should keep in mind that the hierarchies of dwarven society are much more complex than our own. It is easy to gravely insult a man simply by mistaking his position. Since this can lead to unnecessary loss of life and limbs, I will attempt to mitigate the danger for my fellow travelers. The society of Orzmar is divided into nobles, warriors, smiths, artisans, miners, merchants, and servants. I do not recall that there are that many castes. Now, you're undoubtedly saying to yourself, we have all those divisions among our own people. This is a dangerous misconception. Certainly, we do have nobility, artisans, merchants, and these positions are, large, are largely inherited from our parents. However, the younger children of noblemen often choose to be artisans or soldiers. The sons of merchants may join the army, become servants or apprentices themselves to a craftsmen. This is all freely chosen, limited perhaps by the circumstance of birth, but still chosen. What is a matter of choice for most human folk is dictated entirely by birth for dwarves. No one may become a smith who is not who was not born to smith cast parents. A servant who marries a noble woman will never be a noble himself, and although his daughters would be nobles, his sons would be servants, for daughters inherit the caste of their mother, while sons inherit the caste of, caste of their father, at which I said earlier I wasn't aware that there would be a caste codex for some reason, which, like, obviously there would be. And of course, it's on my end for the Jane TV. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Any interesting thing with these nobles guys, though? You know, your name has been mentioned in the assembly. Yes, I am aware. May the paragons watch over your command. Hopefully they will. I have not noticed that hallway before. Uh, let's talk to Duncan. Greetings, my lady Iduken. It is an honor to meet you at last. The honor is mine, Warden. I have had the opportunity to recently meet with your father. He speaks highly of you. He says you may be the most skilled warrior in all of House Iduken. My father does me great honor. I have no doubt it is deserved. We need more Grey Wardens like you, and quickly. Even as the Darkspawn weaken here in Ozimor, they are stirring on the surface. A blight has begun. Soon the fight must go beyond the deep roads, lest the Darkspawn threaten all the world. Uh, what's anyone to say that? Um, <laughs> that's kind of cruel. I do not know as much as I should about the Grey Warden. You know of our dedication to destroying the Darkspawn, our frontline presence during a blight. What else would you know? Are there many of my people in the Grey Wardens? Over the centuries, many dwarves have made names for themselves in our order. These days, however, there are fewer dwarves, and thus even fewer dwarven Grey Wardens. A pity, since dwarven warriors have the most experience fighting Darkspawn. What does this joining entail? Being a Grey Warden means abandoning all ties to your old life. It means dedicating yourself to destroying the Darkspawn. Yeah, and uh, she's... She's Snyduken. Orzmar needs her peer. Then it is a good thing that you have other paths before you. Some are not so lucky. I wish you luck in the deep roads tomorrow. Show the Darkspawn the might of your people. You're a fool. <laughs> oh, that was so amazing. I can call for. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Okay, I'll read the codex first, and then I'll talk to you, maybe call me. Oh gosh, that was amazing. Uh, oh, it was a character one. Okay. The Grey Wardens. The first blight has already raged. Oh, no, no. I don't know. Start that one off badly. The first blight had already raged for 90 years. The world was in chaos. A god had risen, twisted, and corrupted. The remaining gods of Tevinter were silent, withdrawn. What writing we have recovered from those times is filled with despair, for everyone believed from the greatest archons to the lowliest slaves that the world was coming to an end. At Weishaupt, what, Weishaupt? 
damn it, I can never remember how to pronounce that. At Weiss, at Weisshaupt, fortress in the desolate Anderfels, a meeting transpired. Soldiers of the Imperium, seasoned veterans who had known nothing, their, who had known nothing their entire lifetimes except hopeless war, came together. When they left, when they left Weisshaupt, they had renounced their oaths to the Imperium. They were soldiers no longer. They were the Great Wardens. The Wardens began an aggressive campaign against the Blight, striking back against the Darkspawn, reclaiming lands given up for lost. The Blight was far from over, but their victories brought notice, and soon they received aid from every nation in Thedas. They grew in number as well as reputation. Finally, in the year 992 of the Winter Imperium, upon the silent plains, they met the Archdemon, Dumat in Bat. A third of all the armies of northern Thetis were lost to the fighting, but Dumat fell, and the Darkspawn fled back underground. Even that was not the end. The Imperium once revered seven gods. Dumat, Zazakil, Toth, Andoral, Razakel, Lusikan, and Urthamil. Four have risen as archdemons. The Grey Wardens have kept watch through the ages, well aware that peace is fleeting. That their war continues until the last of the dragon gods is gone. From Ferelden, Folklore and History, by Sister Petrine Chantry Scalvin. Interesting, interesting. I kind of wish they told us which of these seven had come back as archdemons. The Blights. My dear Anika, I would not worry about the assembly, but the nobles sit together and argue over whose house owns the grandest tithe. It keeps them from panicking, which they would surely do otherwise, and prevents them from making a greater nuisance of themselves. War is the business of warriors. I would say that the enemy's strategy seems to be changing, but they never appear to have a strategy before, beyond destroying everything in their path. For weeks, their numbers appeared to be dwindling. There was talk that perhaps we were getting close to wiping them out. We could not have been more wrong. For today, we came, un we came upon the body of their main force. I cannot give words to it, Anika. I have never before seen so much death in one place. There are darkspawn beyond counting, and at the heart of the, th of the throne a great beast, as tall as the palace wars are, with breath of fire, a paragon of darkspawn, perhaps, for they seemed to pay it de deference. They were leaving, they were leaving, marching towards, toward the mine shafts, which lead to the surface, but I knew when I beheld them that once they had devoured what lies above us, they will be back. From the letters of Paragon, I do can A. Okay, so I wonder if you would pick, like, a different race? If the Blights change. Like, who, if this one changes, I don't know. Because I know, like, depending on your origin that you take, you find different codexes. So I wonder if this changes, or if it's always Paragon, I do can. Dunk it. Men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings, the Grey Warden sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness, and prevail. Like many others, Duncan gave up his family name when he joined the ranks of the Wardens, a symbolic gesture of cutting ties. He might say this was a convenience in his case, however. His mother was from the Anderfels, his father from De Winter, his childhood was spent in the free marches in Orlais, his people were everywhere and his homeland was nowhere. He was given the almost impossible task of leading the Wardens of Rauden, a kingdom, of, a kingdom that had thrown the Order out 200 years earlier. Facing local suspicion and hostility, he set about fighting recruits. Cool, cool. Lady Helmy! <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's discuss how I'm cool. Your mother would melt the stone if she knew what you just did. Excuse me? Lord Dace is playing you false. Go ahead, be his puppet. Your first command will be marked by every major house turning their back on you. I'm... You know, I'm not... I'm listening. Last spring, a guild from the Merchant Cast invested heavily in an expedition with a guild from the surface. Lord Dace backed the Merchant Guild, pouring a great deal of money into the venture. The expedition was a disaster. So, this is so this is Lord Dace's play to recover his losses. Clever child. Lord Dace lost a great deal of money and prestige. 
The Surface Guild has no way to repay the investment, but it does have several leading members who are descended from noble houses. House Helmy, Bimo, I Dukin. Oh wait, aren't those? Okay. I'm not as smart, but Messenia is smarter, so. <laughs> uh, if the surface dwellers return to the noble houses... You begin to see the whole picture. Your house and mine would be forced to pay the surfacers' kin debts. It would be a great victory for Lord Dace. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was missing something. I don't think I actually like read everything that she was saying. So, like, I missed a part. That makes sense. Mas Masenia knew better. She's smarter than me in this situation. <laughs> so intense. Fine. Let Lord Dace think he he's fooled me. Just so, my clever friend. Smile and nod, and when he asks his question, tell him that the so-called surface cast are right where they belong. That should take Lord Dace down a peg or two. Thank you. You're welcome. Remember this when my house needs your assistance. Yeah, I remember that conversation went very differently the the first time I had it. I was first playing this, but you know. I, I remember bits and pieces of this game this time. You know, Messenia Mas like knows how politics and stuff work. She's she's a noble daughter. My king, please reconsider. Trade contracts alone could bring great prosperity to our houses. Will we really turn our back on our brothers and a potential fortune in cheap labor because of a political technicality? Denial of the traditions of our people does not qualify as a political technicality. There is more to life than monetary gains, my lords Bimo and Mino. The assembly of Kal Sharak will respect the rule of Ozamar, or they will rot and die alone, surrounded by enemies. Savage. Yes, my king. But look, we have company to spare us further wrangling. A trast Vala, my sweet daughter. How fine you look in your grandmother's armor. I hear you were declared champion of the Provings. <laughs> I suppose you were never one to sit by when something exciting was going on. Are you ready to be presented to the heads of the noble houses? Okay, so that's cool to know that I'm wearing my grandma's armor. Of course, father. So dutiful. <laughs> Very well, let us begin. Lords, ladies, Grant me a moment of your time. We are here today so I may present to you my second eldest child. Blessed by the stone and born of the blood that ran in the veins of the Paragon Idukan. Who would pose a question to the prospective commander? Who seeks to know the prospect better? I have a question. I seek to know the prospect better. Lord Dace, head of House Dace, speak. Lords, ladies. My question concerns the plight of our wayward kid, the so-called service cast. What does the commander prospect think is the proper place for these lost souls? Well, in truth, no. She thinks they deserve to be considered dwarves. Alas, or Dace, you have tried to fool the wrong person. Now I could just like straight up super insult him. Uh, which isn't that one. It's the surface dwellers are less than men. But she's going to stay with a, a steady one, which is they should be respected, but no more. Are you satisfied, Lord Dace? Do you feel you have learned something about the prospect? Yes, my king. Then if there are no other challenges, I give you Ozamar's next commander. <laughs> Oh, way Tomorrow, years. our newest commander will lead part of a mission to strike a great blow to the Darkspawn. Not only does this recover access to some of our most important minds, but it also allows our honored guest Duncan, head of Ferelden's Grey Wardens, to strike far into the deep roads. Thank you, King Endrin. While the Darkspawn seemed to withdraw, 
It is only because they are massing on the surface. This could mean a blight, and my men and I will discover the truth. We are honored to have you with us, my friend. Now, feast, drink, and celebrate, for the morning brings battle! As for you, my new commander, find your brother Trian and send him to me. He may be watching the Proving's, or getting some rest in his rooms. Now, Lucinia is definitely not a fan of this, being sent as messenger, but she's in front of everyone, so she's going to be respectful. Of course, Father. Walk well, Commander. Look, there are so many dwarves in that cutscene. Oh, just go. Vanish. Anything interesting you need to say? Good luck to you tomorrow. Your father is very proud of you. Congratulations. If it isn't our newest commander, congratulations, Your Highness. May the ancestors grant us victory against the Dark Spawn. Perhaps we talk to you again. Quickly, find Trian and send him to me. Anything you guys have to say? May House Edukin grow in strength and power. I am at your service. My lady. Well played with young Brinton. Hey. Wait, Brinton? Good to see you. Oh, the, the dude I assassinated. My lady. I totally forgot who Brenton was. I am oh, at so that's service. who you pronounce his where, where did... Where did Helmy go? She... she vanished. Cool. I suppose you're proud of yourself. You underestimated me. That is the way the games of the Assembly are played. Next time, I will think more of you. If you'll excuse me, my lady. Good day, Lady Adukan. Yo, wait, aren't you the guard that, like, I saw duplicates of? Yeah. Oh, that's why I've never actually noticed that. Okay, but before we go and get Trion, who's way over there, I'm gonna go and investigate the rest of the place to see if I can find any loot. Never follow the path that the game sends you. I am at your service, my lady. Your Highness, what a surprise. I apologize if we are in your way. Not all good. I'm 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 intruding on your place, but I am going to loot this box. I have to make sure to settle out. It is good to see you, my lady. You look radiant today, my lady. Anything else in here? That. that one's locked. Is there anything at all in here? Well, I can see what's through that door. <laughs> that one's also locked. Okay. Um, anything you guys have to say now? Just see days all fun for once. <laughs> Now, I highly doubt Lady Helmy's doing this all for my good. Like, I, I won't be spread. She's shady. I know you will do House I Dukin proud. God. Feels like hiding back there. Now, I'm really quick gonna go and try and sell that dagger. Though I still can. Because I think I can. Okay, so I just sold the um, the little dagger I found in the box of the, the grease trap just because, you know, they're not useful to me. Just while I still can, but I, I, I'll probably cut that out in the editing, just because it's, it's not exciting. <laughs> I just, I, I've never noticed these repeated guards before. Like, I wouldn't be surprised there are repeated guards elsewhere, but like, usually they have helmets and stuff. I don't notice it. Like, yeah, like these two guys. Not helmet songs. I can't tell service. that they're repeated. Still locked. No sign of trouble here. Anything in here they might have missed? No. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, before I talk to you two, I'm gonna just, uh... <laughs> yeah, I I'm not gonna talk to you guys first. I'm first gonna... Yep. That's locked. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna sort of saunter over, check out your journal. Anything of use before I talk to you guys. Okay, now. So you are a commander now, in name at least. Shouldn't you be attending our King Father? I could either get right to the point, or I could... <laughs> Yo, Balin, how was your day? Interesting. I would have been at the feast, but Trian had need of me. The world does not stop and start with your meager achievements. Not even tonight. Now, do you have some purpose in bothering us? I just love the fact that, like, he's talking, and he's like, he asks a question, and I can just totally blow him off, and just be like, Yo, Balin, how's life? Uh, once again, courteous to everyone outside, but when referring, when talking to her siblings, she's not. Father's worried you're too much of an ass to be prince. You push your luck. Balin, get to bed. We have a big day tomorrow. I will see what our father wishes from his heir. All day I've put up with that. Can really grate on the nerves. I like Balin. Uh, I agree. And what I'm going to tell you next won't make you any more fond of him. You sound serious, Balin. Unfortunately, I am. Trian has begun to move against you. I never thought his much proclaimed honor would allow him to actually act on his jealousy. Big sister, Trian is going to try to kill you. Dude, I love how Gora moves, like, in that Purchase Detective stance. Okay, so I don't think Masenya, like... Yeah, I don't think Masenya quite expected this. You know, she she might have contemplated it sometimes, but like... She was sort of just gonna let the Assembly dictate it, and I don't think she ever thought that he would do this. How do you know? I overheard him giving orders to some of his men, and I was shocked. Then it began to make sense. Trian's decided you're a threat to his taking the throne. Maybe he's right. Um. True. I, I, I don't like these options. Like, I don't feel like any of them are exactly what Masenio would say. And that doesn't happen often in this game, but sometimes it is, like... Because she knows, she knows she's a threat. But, I don't know, I don't, I don't like number twos. Exactly, I don't exactly like it, but I sort of more see it as being, like... Because, I don't know, I feel like it's very, like, yeah, he is terrible. Like, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it, but it's... It's the closest one we got. So true, Trian's Trian is a pompous ass, and everyone likes me better. It would be unusual for the assembly to ignore the king's choice, but it does happen. The founder of House Bimo became a paragon and king in one move from the assembly, and he was a commoner. That was an extraordinary case, but at least a half dozen times the assembly named a lesser family member or even someone from another house as king. Twice it was a woman. Wait. There's only been... Is he saying there's only been two occasions of the Queen of Orzammar? Or that only twice has this, have they chosen someone besides the heir as a woman? Like, there's not only two Queens of Orzammar, right? If there is, that's... Wow, that's... Dwarves. They're fun. So... Um, well, I would make a good ruler. You entered the provings held in your own honor just for glory and to please the crowds. If you win glory against the Darkspawn tomorrow, it will only strengthen the case for you as the next heir. Trian Veer's father will replace him on the spot. If not, the assembly will surely turn against him when father dies. You know his pride will never allow him to step aside. What's your angle in this? It seems Trian has shown that brothers can't always be trusted. I am next in line. If Trian succeeds in his plot against you, how long do you think I'll live? 
Okay, yeah, good point. <laughs> um, if I strike it, no, actually, Gorum, what do you say? Permission to speak freely? Of course, my friend. Trian would make a terrible king, but no one wants to say it. He has just enough backing in the assembly to make it ugly when your father dies, but not enough to become king. Killing him now makes your house stronger and saves a great deal of bloodshed later. Oh, well. I, I like this one where she asked Balin if he would back her up. Ah, oh, damn it. She, she would ask that. She would ask that question. But, um, unfortunately, I do not have the option. Very well. Trian dies. I'm afraid I must agree with you. Tomorrow's battle is the time to do it. I'll find out the rendezvous and buy you the time to do what must be done. I'm taking your place as Father's second, so I'll be at hand tomorrow. For now, try to get some sleep. May the Paragon smile down on you. Trion and his men will clear the way for the Grey Wardens to descend into the easternmost caverns. Those caverns are still infested by the worst of the Darkspawn. We cannot risk our own troops in there. Understood, Lord Haramont. We should be able to sense the Darkspawn and avoid them once the way is open. May the Paragons favor you, and the stone catch you if you fall. Come then! Glory awaits! Balin, you and your men will second the king, clearing the main road. Don't you think it looks a little cowardly to allow these humans to take our place where the fighting is thickest? Are you questioning the battle plan? Of course not. I'm sure your caution is for the glory of us all. Enough, Balin. Take your men and make ready. Paramount and I need to have words with your sibling. Good luck, my sister. Your father has a special mission for you. In the eastern deep roads, there is a secret door carved into the stone. The door leads to a tide, abandoned long ago by your ancestors. The Darkspawn have made it impossible to reach it. My father believed that the shield of the Paragon Iduken remains in that tide, under the stones of the central room. Reclaim the shield and glory will be yours. Hmm. Um... I'm supposed to do this alone? As always, Gorum will accompany you, and we've sent scouts ahead. One of the scouts will meet you at the first crossroads you come to. The second will be further in. When you get to the door, use your signet ring to open it. Questions? I don't know where I had a signet ring. Also, wasn't it meant to be a commander, like, you know, commanding an entire, like, battalion? I don't know. I assumed I was commanding a bit more. Where do we go from there? The crossroads where you meet the first scout will be the rendezvous point. There you can present the shield to the lords and demonstrate the strength of Iduken. May the ancestors watch over you, my child. Well, cool. Unfortunately, we will not be doing that. Because that is the end of the episode. Um, if you stayed this long, thanks. Maybe consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you're intrigued in where Masenia's story is going from here, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.